the everyone. Now we want to investigate the possibility of achieving data compression when the random variables are either independent and identically distributed and, uh, or, and also when they are dependent. So when they are independent and identically distributed, we will be considering the asymptotic repartition property as an approximation to the entropy, which is the fundamental limit for data compression, as we already covered in our previous lecture. And then when the random variables are dependent, we will then be considering the entropy rate as a sufficient approximation uh, in terms of measuring the growth of the entropy. So to begin, I think we'll start with uh, yes. Now the idea about the asymptotic repartition property, the EP for short, is that almost everything is almost equally probable. And this follows directly from the law of large numbers, which describes the outcome of performing an experiment large number of times. And the law of large numbers actually implies that the average of the results obtained from a large number of trials could be approximated or better still is as close to the expected value as you know possible so we have a limit here for n sufficiently large such that the average value of the samples i call the one to n is the same as the expected value which is e of x and this and the rethink still has the same, so on the end, the summation of the samples to n for n sufficiently large, meaning extending to infinity. And you know, you already know that the law of large numbers have two variants, which is uh, the weak law of large numbers and the strong law of large numbers. And for the weak law of large numbers, which is the same as the Ching Ching's law, it states that the sample average, the expected value, converges to the expected value in probability. So, okay, in probability. While the strong law of large numbers actually uh, states that the sample average approximates or better still converges almost surely to the expected value. And the asymptotic equipartition property is analogous to the weak law of large numbers. Such so that average value one over the probability distributions, same approximates to the entropy. This also can be written as negative n of joint probability distribution is the same as entropy, where S1, S2, all the way to Sn are independent and identically distributed random variables such so that the probability distribution of observing the sequence S1, S2, S to Sn is the same as the joint probability distribution. Now, you will recall from our previous lecture that 
the Fanos inequality. That's Fanos inequality. It's given that for two independent and identically distributed random variables with the entropy H, the probability distribution is given such that X being the same as X prime, that this is greater than four to two to the power of minus the entropy H of S with equality if and only if X has a uniform distribution. So when X has a uniform distribution, then the probability of the independent and identically distributed random variables will be the same as two to the power of minus H. So hence, for the probability distribution given originally, S1, S2, all the way to S of N, assigned to an observed sequence, S of one to S of N, we will therefore have that the probability will be close to two to the power of minus NH with high probability, okay? With high probability. That is, this is equal to this. So it's not really right there. So hence, if almost all events are equally surprising, which is the asymptotic compartition property, then the probability of x1, s2, way to xn, so that the probability of x1, s2, and the way to xn, would be the same as to the power minus n, h plus or minus, probability of error would be approximately unity. That is, if x1, s2, all the way to sn are independent and identically distributed random variables, having a distribution p of x. So in terms of convergence in probability, which is AEP in relation to the law, to the weak law of large numbers, given the sequence of random variables, say X1, S2, all the way, it can be said that the sequence S1, S2 to whatever value converges to the random variable x, so it converges to the random variable x. One, when in probability, if for every error value greater than zero, then the probability of xn is x is greater than the error value, tends to zero, and also converges to a random variable x when in mean square, if the expected value of f of sn plus x squared tends to zero, and also with the probability of one, that is when the event is almost surely, if the probability taking the limit of xn equal to x when n is sufficiently large is equal to one. So the asymptotic partition property theorem therefore states that if s of one, s of two, or the way are independent and identically distributed with the probability distribution p of x, then we have the average value, the log of the joint probability distribution approximates 
to the entropy of the source in probability. To show this, we know this. the same as the expected value, which is minus one of n, more probability of s of i, right? Given i taking on values from the And if this is true, then we have negative the expected value p of x, which is the same as the expected value by laws of logarithm, of one over p of x in probability, right? And we know that this is the same as the summation p of x log, which is the expected value, it's the expected value, right? Log one, sorry, not log log. <laughs> over p of x, which is the same as h of x, right? So from the foregoing, we can divide the set of all sequences into two possible sets. Say a typical set, a typical set, and a non-typical set, non-typical, or an atypical. A typical set. Such that the typical set is where the sample entropy is close to the true entropy. So the sample entropy is very close to the true entropy. So that's a typical set. And for a non-typical set, it contains every other sequence. So any property that is proved for the typical sequence would then be true with high probability, okay? So now let us make a formal statement for the typical set. The typical set given as A sub n in relation to the error, that is a typical set with respect to the probability of error, P of x, is the set of sequence S1, S2, all the way to Sn, taking on being elements of the set S sub n with, with the property two of minus n, h of x, plus the error value, that's all equal to the probability, joint probability distribution. So, so all the way to n, less than two to the minus n, two to x, which follows directly from the final of inequality, as we already showed earlier. So such that, the properties of the typical set therefore follows directly that if the distribution S1, S2, all the way to Sn happen to the elements of the typical set, then the entropy and also the error value must be less than or equal to negative. And Xn, this must be less than x. So 
the second property here is that the probability of the typical set but I still say that the probability is equal to the typical set which is greater than it of the typical set should be error value for sufficiently large n. Okay, the probability of the typical set is greater than one minus the value, and then the number of elements in the set is given as number of elements in the typical set to be less than or to, to, to the power of the band on this, which is h of x. And then Fourth one, which is the number of elements in the typical set A, so, A. greater than the order of one minus the value to the of n, which is this is for n sufficiently large, okay? So here you know that the typical set has a probability nearly equal to one, okay? Probability is nearly equal to one, and all the elements of the typical set are nearly equal probable, such that the number of elements in the typical set should be nearly equal to two to the power of nh, okay? and the error value reduces to zero. So we can now clearly state that the typical set is the smallest set. Let us see, this error is a small set that contains most of the probabilities. So if that's what it is, now you'll recall that the entropy is the average number of bits needed to represent the random variable. So in other words, the entropy is needed for the compression of data, right? For data compression. And it is dependent also, it is dependent on probabilities like we mentioned in our previous class, dependent on probabilities of the random variables and not on the true value. So since the typical set is a small set that contains most of the probabilities, then to evaluate the shortest description of the sequence or sequences of the random variable, we could divide the sequence, say S of n, S sub n, sub n, into a typical set. Divide this into a typical set. And also, into um, a typical set that is the complement of the typical set. Complement of the typical set. So why this is the typical set, then this is um, a typical set, which is a complement of the typical set. And here you will see that each sequence of the typical set 
may be represented by giving the index of the sequence in the cells. So know that they are actually less than or equal to the power of n, h plus epsilon sequences in the typical set. following through based on the previous definition, such that the indexing requires here, the indexing will require n h plus epsilon plus one bit in terms of data compression, because the extra one bit is necessary because this parameter may not be an integer. So also the sequences that are not in the typical set that are in the a typical set may also be indexed using n log x plus one bit. So in other words, a code can therefore be developed for all the sequences of x to the power of n by prefixing these indices by one. And if, for instance, that S sub n sub n is a sequence, is a sequence, x1, s2, all the way to sn, such that the length of the code L x of n corresponds to s of n, then if n is sufficiently large, if n is sufficiently large, such that the probability of the typical set is greater or equal to one minus exponential value of minus uh, the error value, then the expected length of the code word, which will which will become clearer when we treat the data compression uh, topic, will now be the expected length of this code word will now be the same. S to the power of n is the code we are dealing with here. S sub n, that's S super n, to sub n times the length of the code, which is S. Okay. So, If we have been able to therefore establish that the expected length of this code is the same, so little s of n, s of n for s of n taken on values, then since the sequence, you know, we already said that the sequence may be divided into the typical and a typical set, that is the typical set and its complement, then we can therefore say that the same is true when S sub n take on values from the typical set plus when S sub n takes on values from the complement, the, the typical set. Now, based on the prefixing, we already mentioned that the total length becomes the total length becomes less than a quarter of n, which plus a plus two for the typical set, and the same applies. The same apply for the atypical set, such that the expected length, since we now have an equality. The expected length will now be less than or equal to this parameter. So 
n, yeah. so n, or I send taking on values from the typical set plus taking on values from the, the typical set. This will now be the same as the probability of the expected value here, and as the probability of the typical set and probability of the typical set. Uh, typical set times the length, which is n into bracket h plus so on. So, plus probability of the atypical set is complement times n plus two. All right. And this indexing of here, yeah, we call that the indexing of less than or equal to, to the power of n of h plus n. The error value sequences in the typical set requires no more than n plus, or let us say n, the entropy plus the error difference plus one bit. And in this case, by indexing, plus that, then we now have that this is less than or equal to n plus epsilon plus epsilon n x plus two, which is the same as n to bracket h plus error exponent. There, the prime of the error value is the same this plus 2 over n can be made arbitrarily small and 10 this is n can be made arbitrarily small depending on the choice of the error value relative to n so from the foregoing we can therefore Conclude by saying that uh, if and if we have S sub so N independent and identically distributed random variables with the probability distribution of P of X for which the error value is greater than zero, then there exists a code. So uh, there exists a code that can map S sub N of length N into arbitrary strings such that the mapping is one to one and it's invertible. So that we have the expected value one over N and the length, the effective length of the code will be less than or equal to the entropy value plus the error value for n sufficiently large. Which follows directly from the law of large numbers, or let us see the weak law of large numbers, which is the asymptotic repetition property. Therefore, in terms of data compression, the sequence S of n may be represented by using n h of x bits on the average. When S sub n is independent and identically distributed. Good. Now, what happens when 
the random variables are dependent. And then we now that brings us to the entropy rate. So the entropy rate of a given sequence of random variables is the measure of the growth of the entropy, the sequence with time. So we can talk about the growth of the entropy of the sequence with respect to time. So based on the AEP, as we already observed, we saw that NH of X beats on the average may be sufficiently used to describe a random variable that is independent and identically distributed. Good. So when the random variables are dependent, and let's say we end up having a stationary process that is a stochastic process whose unconditional joint probability distributions does not change when shifted in time, then the entropy rate therefore attempts a solution to the problem by solving the joint entropy which estimates that this joint entropy grows asymptotically linearly in N at a rate we can say is H of cap X. So since there exists some level of dependence among the random variables, X of I, for instance, then the entropy of a stochastic process may be defined that is the entropy of a stochastic process, a stochastic process, S of i, let's say, let's use cap X sub i, may be defined, it may be defined now as H of cap X, taking on the limit for N sufficiently large, and over N will now be the same as the joint entropy. rather than the entropy of the last symbol. This happens when the limits exist. So interpretively, the entropy rate is the limit of the joint entropy of N members of the process X divided by N as N tends to infinity. So given that the entropy of a given sequence is given as the joint entropy, comma, so x1, s2, all the way to sn, it's given as log n to the half n. This is for n equally likely output, just like we showed in our, in our previous lecture on the properties of the entropy. So it will be seen here that since the joint entropy is given as this, then the entropy rate will be the same as one over n log n to the power of n which gives us n over n log n, which is the same as log n. Hence, the entropy rate is seen to be the best achievable data compression. Now, since there's some level of dependence, so a stochastic process as defined earlier, so I, is an index sequence of random variables for which there can be an arbitrary dependence among the random variables. And the process is characterized by the joint probability mass function, such that the probability of this distribution, x1, s2, all the way to sn, is the same as that of the distribution s2, 
Okay, wait. So S N. Yeah. Which is the same. Let's go back to X one. S two. Okay. So X N. Then S one. S two. Okay. Wait. S n is an element S n for all values that's for all values of n taking the values from one to all the way so a stochastic process is therefore said to be stationary if the joint distribution of any subset of the sequence of random variables is invariant that is it's unchanging with respect to shifts in time index that is probability of x1 is equal to x1, that of x2 is the same as x2, all the way to that of xn is the same as sn, which is the same as the probability that x1 plus l is equal to x1, s2 plus l is the same as s2 all the way to x n plus l is the same as s n for every n and every shift l. So we're saying for every n and every shift l and for all values of x1, s2, all the way to xn, the elements of the stochastic process. And now, I can say that an example of a stochastic process is the Markov chain, in which each random variable depends only on the one preceding it, and is conditionally independent of all the other preceding random variables like we discussed in the previous lecture. So we can now talk about the stochastic process with some level of dependence. And now a stochastic process S1, S2, all the way is said to be a Markov chain, said to be a Markov chain or a Markov process for n equal to one, two, all the way, when the probability of x n plus one is the same as the conditional probability of s n plus one given that xn equal to xn comma sn minus one equal to xn minus one all the way to x1 equal to x1 has a common. So this therefore gives us the probability of xn plus one to be the same as the conditional probability xn plus one, given that sn equal to sn has a chord uh, for all x1, s2, all the way to xn, then xn plus one are elements of the stochastic process. So hence the joint probability mass function, joint, joint probability, mass function of the random variables can therefore be rewritten that is the joint this is the conditional so the joint probability distribution can therefore be written in terms of the conditional probabilities right where these are the conditional probabilities such that P of X1, S2, all the way to Xn, which are the joint probability distribution, will now be the same 
is p of x1 and p of s2, given that s1 has a chord, times p of s3, given that s2 has a chord, all the way to p of xn, given that sn minus 1 has a chord. Therefore, this forms Markov chain of say x1 to s2, s3, all the way to so the Markov chain is said to be time invariant if the conditional probabilities, this conditional probabilities does not depend on n for all values of n taken from one to whatsoever value such that the probability here, Sn plus one is equal to B. So joint is a conditional probability. B, given that Sn, which is equal to A, has occurred. This is now the same as S2, or to B, given that the, the uh, conditional probability of B, given that X1 equal to A, has occurred for all A and B in elements of X. So therefore, if the stochastic process is a Markov chain, is a Markov chain or forms a Markov chain, then S sub n is called the state at time n. This is the state at time n, and then a time invariant Markov chain is characterized by its initial state and the probability matrix, the probability matrix P in the same as P sub i j, so that i j are elements of values say one, two, three, all the way to n. Here, p sub i j is the same as the probability of x n plus one, which is the same as the conditional probability j given as Sn equal to i as a chord. Now, if it is possible to go with positive probabilities from any state of the Markov chain to any other state in a finite number of steps, then we say that the Markov chain is irreducible. Okay? And if the largest common factor of the lengths of the different parts from a state to itself is one, then the Markov chain is a periodic. So if the probability mass function of the random variables at time n is the same as P of S of n, then the probability mass function at time, that's at time n, then at time n plus one, then the probability mass function will be the same as the probability of xn plus one, and the same as the sum of the probabilities of xn times the probability of xn, xn plus one, for all values of xn. So a distribution on the states, so that the distribution at time n plus one, is the same as a distribution at time n is called a stationary process or distribution. So this is so because if the initial state of a Markov chain is drawn according to a stationary distribution, then the Markov chain forms a stationary process. And if the finite state Markov chain is irreducible and also a periodic, 
then the stationary distribution is said to be unique. And from any starting distribution, the distribution S sub n tends to the stationary distribution, tends to the stationary distribution as n becomes sufficiently large. So it's given a sequence of n random variables. The entropy of the sequences grows with n by factor defined as the entropy rate, say, H x taking on limits as n grows to infinity, we have one over n being the same as the joint entropy. Good. So for instance, if x1, s2 are independent and identically distributed, so let us see if they are independent and identically distributed random variables. So what will happen to the entropy rate? Now we see that the entropy rate, say h of x, the entropy rate could be seen as taking a limit, one over n times the joint distribution, right? And now, since they are independent and identically distributed, so we are going to be taking the nth entropy. So, either x1 or xn. So, once this crosses this, then it brings us back to the entropy. Now, which further validates the asymptotic equipartition property we established earlier that for an independent and identically distributed random variable following through with the weak, weak law of large numbers, that the asymptotic partition property shows that the average value of the expected uh, values approximates improbability to the entropy. Okay. What if the sequence, what if we have a sequence of independent but not identically distributed random variables? So the random variables are independent, but not identically distributed. So what happens? So we have here that the joint entropy is the same as the sum of the entropies taking on values from i equal to one to n. And note that these entropy values for the independent but not identically distributed random variables are not equal. Alternatively, the entropy rate can be written as h prime of x, which takes on limits from n to infinity for the conditional entropy as n given that x n minus one and that s n minus one from s n minus two all the way to x one have occurred when the limits exist. So note that 
h prime of x is the conditional entropy of the last random variable given the past, given the past, okay? These are all the past uh, events. While h of x, yeah? Let's put it this way like this. Is the per symbol, per symbol, right? Per symbol entropy of n random variables. So for a stationary process, both limits are equal and they exist. That is, h of x is the same as h prime of x. So when we are considering per symbol, and we are considering the conditional properties. So if that is that, then for the stationary Markov chain, the entropy rate can therefore be give, given as a, for a stationary for a stationary stationary Markov chain. The entropy rate can be given as h of x in the same as h prime of x takes on limits of h, the conditional entropy of the last symbol, given that all other symbols have been transmitted all the way to s1, take on the limits of h of xn, given that S n minus one transmitted will be part of H of S two given X one. Okay, let me see. There, the conditional entropy is evaluated using the stationary distribution, and if the stationary distribution, let's say mu, is the stationary distribution, for instance. Then, which is a solution to mu sub j, i mu i, i j as defined originally, or j, then the stochastic process i is a stationary, a stationary Markov chain. With the stationary distribution, we have the stationary distribution mu and transition matrix P, transition, transition matrix P and S sub one has the distribution mu as the uniform uh, stationary distribution, as a, has the uh, uh, stationary distribution mu, then the entropy rate can be written as negative summation i sub j, mu i, e i j, or e j. So, summarily, when we talk about the asymptotic partition property, talk about the approximation for getting the entropy h of x for data compression, considering independent and identically distributed random variables. And then when we talk about the entropy rate, then we consider such approximation to the entropy for data compression when we have to consider dependent variables. I think this is a good place to start and hope to get things going in our next class. Bye for now.